you first met Julian, if I'm not mistaken, um, when he was fighting sexual assault charges uh, in Sweden, and you you initially joined his his defense team. What made you interested in that case, and what's your perspective on that whole case? Well, I joined his legal team in February 2011, and uh, the so Julian had started publishing the WikiLeaks uh, publications uh, from that had been uh, sent to WikiLeaks by Chelsea Manning in 2010, so a, a year before I joined his team. And so these publications from Chelsea Manning, which were uh, the Collateral Murder video, um, the Iraq War Logs, Afghanistan War Diaries, um, Diplomatic Cables and Guantanamo Bay Files, and these are the same publications that Julian is indicted with, um, indicted over now, uh, that had happened uh, in the lead up to um, me joining his legal team. And it had also started uh, prior to any preliminary investigation being opened in Sweden. And uh, actually there were never any charges in Sweden, uh, none were brought. And that's quite amazing because um, it kind of defies logic, right? Because there was a big extradition case and um, Sweden would say, well, we haven't decided whether to actually bring charges against him, but we just want to question him. And then um, there was this question about, well, why don't you just question him? Because in, you know, hundreds of other cases, uh, Sweden would travel to other European countries to question him and so on. Anyway, that Swedish preliminary investigation um, was uh, dropped and resurrected multiple times. It was dropped four times resurrected three, um, no charges were ever brought. Uh, the, it's quite extraordinary. I mean, the, the, um, the amazing thing about this case is that the prosecutor was refusing to question him. And you think, how can it possibly be that in a, in a sex case where of course memories fade and, and it all depends on, you know, um, the recollections of, of the people involved and so on, that the prosecutor um, had to be compelled by the Swedish Court of Appeal uh, six years after the fact um, to question him. And uh, the reason the Court of Appeal compelled her was she said uh, that she had failed her, her um, professional duty to um, advance the case. And of course, this is just one um, aspect of how that Swedish preliminary investigation was abusive. And the reason it was abusive was because it was um, it took place in a highly charged uh, political moment in which Julian was being um, actively um, sought by uh, authorities because he was about to publish um, the Chelsea Manning leaks. He had already published the collateral murder video and the Afghan war logs. And then it was one month um, before uh, WikiLeaks started publishing the Iraq war logs um, that he went to Sweden. There's actually a Daily Beast article. Uh, it's archived. It's it's no longer on the website, but it's archived in which uh, the U.S. Uh, the reporter says that the State Department was contacting its allies in Europe. Um, and urging them to find a way to stop Julian in his tracks to arrest him on whatever, um, because they had by then they had arrested uh, Chelsea uh, Manning, then Bradley Manning, um, and they knew that WikiLeaks had more major uh, leaks coming out, and so they wanted to stop him in his tracks. So you're basically saying Sweden was engaged in a politically motivated witch hunt of Julian. But the thing that I'm also curious about is, you know, these are uh, not the traditional circumstances under which most people meet their spouses. Um, what was this like for you emotionally? Was this this sense of, I mean, most of the time when you meet somebody who becomes your husband, they're not, you know, being accused of rape uh, in another country. Um, how did you feel signing up to work on this case and then getting to know Julian? Like what was swirling around in your head? Well, I was um, steeped in the in the um, documents surrounding this uh, Swedish preliminary investigation, and um, there was no case to answer from the beginning. It was pretty clear that the uh, administrative use of the extradition uh, request from Sweden 
was a way to uh, trap him, basically to bury him in a legal um, quagmire uh, in order to interfere with his publishing work. I mean, in Sweden, as I said, like the the initial prosecutor who uh, looked at the case said there there is no um, crime of rape involved in these allegations. Um, but the Swedish um, look, the Swedish uh, conduct in this case also responds to uh, local dynamics. Uh, the the person who took on the case within days um, was also running for. Or, um, uh, there were general elections in Sweden. He was tipped to become the new uh, justice minister. Um, Julian's case was in the media. Uh, there were a lot of motivations. It wasn't just the uh, you know possible nudge or likely nudge from the State Department at the highest levels. Uh, Julian um, Julian's name was was leaked to the press, uh, which should never happen in the case of a preliminary investigation where the person hasn't even been formally accused. And as I said, he was never formally accused in those nine years. Um, the UN's uh, Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, which looked at this case from 2014 onwards, um, saw uh, the um, underlying investigation material. It was an adversarial process in which Sweden and the UK um, also participated and were unsuccessful in convincing this um, group of UN experts on arbitrary detention um, that they had conducted themselves in a lawful manner. They had, in fact, violated international obligations concerning arbitrary detention when it came to Julian, because, as I said, he was neither convicted or even charged in relation to Sweden. Um, and so it was this extraordinary abusive nature of the Swedish allegations um, that was immediately obvious to me as uh, a member of his legal, legal team, but also as a Swedish speaker, because I'm fluent in Swedish, and so I could directly access the um, um, the material of the case uh, that we had access to, to see that this was uh, absurd. And, and my own experience, I mean, as I got to know Julian, was to see how he was uh, persecuted and um, maligned in all sorts of ways. Of course, the Swedish aspect was just one. It was an effective one because uh, Julian had a lot of support from the left uh, initially um, because these publications concerned, of course, the Bush Wars and so on. And a sex case, um, even one without a formal accusation or a conviction or anything, uh, obviously is going to alienate um, a portion of the left um, and and uh, a big portion of women. Um, and there was a deliberate uh, strategy as, as these uh, FOIA documents show. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our new show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. New episodes drop every week, so subscribe to Reason TV's YouTube channel to get notified when that happens or to the Just Asking Questions podcast on Apple, Spotify, or any other podcatcher. See you next week.